What do you want to guys? International DJ, mental health ambassador, videographer. What are you doing now? I'm, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, to be fair. Del boy and sexiest in the Sexy, well. Sexiest in Hull list. Good. I like to say that I'm a um, jack of all trades, master of none. I've got a few things under my belt, but I'm absolutely useless at all of them. DJ and Jeffers, obviously. DJ and Jeffers. DJ is my passion. The other is a business. Yeah. One point five million streams latest one. Yeah, that's officially. Um. So, let's talk about how you first got into DJing. So talk us through that. What made you get into it? Why did you start? Yeah. What made you love it? Uh, good question. I think I've always been into music as a kid, but then. I think as you get a bit older, I've always been a very inquisitive person. Like I've just asked everyone in your office a million questions about the job roles. As you all know, I like to know everything, not in a nosy way. I'm just very interested in things and very inquisitive. And I think as I got to like 16, 17, music was just growing on me. I wasn't really into party, even though I'm sat here with a beer. Um, it's, just a, it's just a casual one. I've never really been a party animal, but I've always been so like I just I always got this feeling off music like nothing else um and then I think just got to that stage I was like it'd be cool if I could mix these you know when you start going to like house parties and stuff I because cause, because I'm not a drinker I always wanted to be in control of something like I've always wanted to have a presence somewhere but or an authentic presence um, and being the joker or being the the drunken idiot or being the you know the, the, the that kind of guy want for really for me even though it is me a little bit um so I found it I needed to find a purpose and I just won Christmas I was stuck for a present, mum and dad. The budget was getting smaller because <laughs> yeah. I was getting older. You know, when you're a kid and it starts at 500 quid, a grand, and then it goes down to 200 quid, and I just saw these little decks for like 150, I think, from Argos. Got them. Christmas Day, belted a couple of tunes out awfully, like horrific mixing. Yeah. Um, I still play the tracks now, but obviously I can mix them now. Um, and I didn't really take it serious for a while because I think like most things, I think this is why people don't, the reason why people don't advance is because it isn't easy. Yeah. So the first hurdle, you either you either cross it or you don't. And I think a lot of people, you know, they'll buy decks or they'll buy loads of gym equipment or they'll buy a laptop and go, I'm going to start photography. Um, but I'm going to basically I've started doing all these things, which a lot of people say, how how, how you how can you do all these things? And it's because I know not to give up when it gets hard yeah. and it gets easier. It's like learning to drive a car, learning to ride a bike. Nobody could drive a car. Nobody could ride a bike. We all had stabilizers. Mm -hmm. We all had a driving instructor. We all need to start somewhere. And when I first started DJing, I really struggled and got some help. You know, everyone can is approachable these days, especially with social media and the internet. Got the help I needed and stuck with it. And before you know it, muscle memory, you know, loads of hours of practice, a few noise complaints from the neighbours and a letter off the council later. I was, I was, I was a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like getting in touch. I think what we've found is, especially as we've been starting with our vlog, um, We've, me and Chino have been reaching out to hundreds of people on LinkedIn, do you know what I mean? Connecting them, asking questions. And I think, especially with something in the internet now as it is, it's so easy just to drop in someone's DMs or yeah. sort of get in touch. And that's sort of how you've built your brand from that as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, sort yeah. Of being that inviting presence. Yeah, 100%. Um, so you said you was quite in, you said some word, inquisitive. Yeah, inquisitive. So when yeah. you went about learning, obviously you said you put hundreds of hours in, was that learning through YouTube, through paying other people how did you go about it um good question i think um youtube's a great tool um it's something i've started doing myself mm. but i also am, i'm quite an in the presence one-to-one -one person yeah. um i've also got like really bad attention like i've got attention deficit disorder um okay. I, haven't, I haven't got the hyperactivity even though i am quite hyper all the time yeah. so like even just things like this i can drift yeah. naturally um but because of like YouTube and stuff, I struggle to sit and watch things for 30, 40 minutes. Um, so I, but if you put me in a room with someone, I'll, I'll yeah. stand and learn. Um, so I, I kind of, I already had good connections to people cause I've always been in like in the know, I guess in a sense. So you just you, use your resources. I think that's what a lot of people forget is, um, everybody knows somebody. And if you don't know the social media, you know, everyone can connect the dots nowadays due to the connections that are available online. Um, so I, I did pull in a bit of help off, a few of the DJs that I knew, but I've always had my own way of, if you show me something, I'll adapt it to my own ways. Um, like I've always put my own spin on things. Mm -hmm. I guess that's creativity coming into it. Yeah. Um, again, it runs back into the attention deficit disorder. Like most creators have either got ADHD or some form of like, you know, creative yeah. craziness yeah. inside of them. Like even a bit of autism or something, you know, you always find a lot of the act big actors, a lot of businessmen have got, 
some form of you know behavioral issue or focusing issue and it, it all runs hand in hand with creativity so i guess i just kind of took what people taught me as a bit of a sprinkle and then put the hours in and it didn't make sense at first at all it's like when you're trying to learn something it didn't make sense and all of a sudden it just kind of started gelling together and then i look back now and i don't even really it's like you like when you're driving somewhere like i drove here today i could not tell you how I got here. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So, no. Because you just go into such yeah. a natural straight state of flow and that's how, that's exactly how it is with DJing now. Yeah, spot on. Um, so, obviously that's a bit about your background with it all. How did you go about landing that first gig then? So obviously, how did you go from your bedroom yeah. and your mum's living room at Christmas into yeah. your, was it position? Yeah, it was, yeah. Was. So my first gig came about, um, Again, social media is something I'm big on. Uh, the same, I'm big on it in terms of for my brand, but I'm very against it for personal life yeah. because of mental health yeah. and the, the strain on society. I think I think the society society puts a lot of pressure on people to look successful on social media. Mm -hmm. So I've always tried to be true to myself. I post my music, I post my work, I post my business, I post a few photos of my missus on holiday just to give a bit of personal touch. But I don't post my problems. Yeah, I, I don't post. I never have really posted my problems, and I think. I've always been active on social media, quite very present, and I've always been very responsive. And I've always, I've, even before DJing, I kind of had, in a sense, a bit of a following. I had a lot of, I was, I guess you could call me busy, like whatever you want to say. I've always just known people. I played football for years, that's how I know you, Jack. Um, I played rugby for years. I danced when I was 10, that's how I know most girls in Hull, even though my missus is probably going to watch this, so don't think anything more than that. Um, even older people, got an older sister, so I was always connected with kids a couple of years older. That was always a bit cool, and I've never been snobby about younger people, you know, where it's like, oh, I'm too I'm too cool for them. Like, I've always been open to anything. Um, so when I, when I guess when I started DJing, you know, there's a bit of talk going around the rugby, like I was doing a few house parties, building up a bit of a name, and it starts off with people going, oh, he ain't going to be very good, and then turning around and going, actually, he's, he's all right, he can mix. And I just built up this kind of, like, repertoire around I guess like Hull yeah. and East Riding um, did a few barbecues did a few house parties laid it down social media was tagging away popping off and then these promoters um, Position Nightclub which is a weird day to film this because in the same day of today down, Position's getting knocked down yeah. Welly's just shut and Polar Bear shut so that's three businesses in my industry shutting in one day and they've all played a part in my uh, they've all all three of them venues have played a massive part and obviously Position was the first place I DJ'd um, yeah promoters just give me a shot and I guess looking back it was because they saw the energy that I had not maybe the talent because I probably wasn't ready for it at the time but I, I've always been one to say you know throw yourself in the deep end pressure makes diamonds um, I love that yeah. AJ Tracy used that lyric in one of his songs recently and I thought I'm having that I'm taking that yeah. so there you touched on a bit about how you've built your own brand I know I've been away with you we went to London I've been mm. to some of your shows um, how did you manage sort of creating the content and managing the social media around the mad times so obviously you're DJing until 5 o'clock in the morning yeah. we was going to Leeds we went yeah, to London yeah, 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 the yeah. country yeah. how did you balance that in uh, creating the content I know we've got Chino who has it as a full time job mm. as well as yeah, 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 yeah. how did you manage that alongside the actual doing of the DJing yeah content creation is a crazy thing to be honest and a lot of people ask me how am I so active and but genuine, like how do I make it look so easy and be so busy at the same time? And I think my main point, and I was thinking about this before I came, because I kind of guess you was going to ask me this. And I think my, my main like thing with the whole content and the whole social media and the whole branding is I've branded myself as my own name. Everything I put out on social media, everything I post, everything I design, everything I do is from me. It's from the heart. It's personal. You know, it's not really overthought because I love what I do. Um, it's all natural. Like a lot of videos that people have probably seen of me DJing when they've maybe gone viral or, you know, I've been just jumping up and down going crazy like that. It's just natural instincts. Um, I'm a very creative person. I've always been into photography and videography as, we, as we'll probably speak about. I've built a business in that industry as well. So they've kind of gone hand in hand for me. Like I've always took my camera to my gigs. I've always had friends with me. As you, as you know, you've been with me. Um, I'll always pass my camera to a drunk friend and go just move that about a bit while I drop this tune. Um, that one 30 seconds video could last the next month of promo um but some nights i might get four videos so that next four videos i've got the full week lined up and i'm quite quick at like editing and stuff so i've never really struggled to create content and i've never overthought it there has been times where i haven't had created content for maybe a month but because i've always had a good backlog like even now there's stuff i could post that i haven't posted i'd have to dig through my dropbox and stuff but i've got stuff i could post and i think 
building up a natural um, catalog of content, be it a photo, be it a video, be it a memory, be it whatever it may be. Before you know it, you've got this kind of pot of going, oh, well, it's Wednesday, so I can post a video to remind people of what happened on Saturday. It's Friday now, I can show people what's happening this weekend. There's just, and I don't overthink it, I don't plan it, I don't have no strategy. I've, and I'm quite off the cuff, like I could walk out of here um, and I could get a, I could sign a deal, a label, I could sign a record deal. So it's a quick photo of me signing the contract with a smile on my face. Next thing you know, you've got a thousand shares and 10,000 likes. Yeah. And that's not me thinking, I'm going to post this for 10,000 likes. Yeah. But it's it's also what people are interested in seeing. Yeah. So it's like you like touched on before, because you you've used yourself as the brand. You're not going under a name. You're yeah. Still, you've ever since you, well, you did the transition from Ben Rainey FC, didn't you? To yeah. Ben Rainey, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm now just Ben Rainey on Instagram. Oh, you've made it now. Somebody at Instagram hooked me up with the official title yeah. of Ben Rainey. They, they got rid of the DJ, and I think that's even better for yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Like you said, it's you've got the added advantage of I think content over the past. I know we touched on it before this, speaking about LinkedIn or Facebook, content has been very staged and mm. with Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, all the social media is mm. coming out and everyone pushing on video. Now I think people are starting to realise that the more natural content is, it doesn't need to be Hollywood standard, yeah. it doesn't need to yeah. be polished and it, it works well for you. So yeah. I completely agree on that stage. So from there then, you've obviously done position, the first one. Um, you've talked about building your brand. I know we touched on before, obviously I went to London with you, there's about three people there, like, but on the videos you made it look... Popping. Popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's sort of like a fake it till you make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We've spoke about yeah, yeah, yeah. So just go into detail about how you, you've not over the pudding, but you've taken something that ain't all shiny. Yeah, 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 100%. So in terms of, you know, making something, like the whole fake it till you make it process, I think there's a, there's a, there's a fine line between lying yeah. and emphasizing i've been i've always been good at hyping but i always have the product still if that makes sense and um, so in terms of like say that like you do a gig and it's not that busy don't get me wrong there's been some nights where it's just been dead and i've just gone oh my hands up and go this is fell on its ass yeah. but there's been gigs where it's not been as busy as it's been perceived there's been you know events where i've played and i've made it look more than it is and i think that's just creativity you you've got it in you some people have even got it in you or they haven't got it in you to you know do this the right way and build content that way. And I think for me, I've always kind of, I've made the best out of a bad situation, even if I've been in like a, if, for example, if I'm at a, in a nightclub and it's quiet, rather than have the camera panning on the full crowd, I love the I have the camera panning on me with just a section of the crowd that's just at the front, which looks awesome. Cause they're thinking, oh, well, they're all loving him at the front. Like for example, if I DJ at like an intimate party, um, say this is a night, there's like a, a, 45 degrees angle from the side to the back rather than being all the way at the back where I would be in a rammed club with a camera I'll be at 45 degrees yeah. but you can because it's that wide you'll still see a bit of the crowd and I've always been quite clever with that but at the same time I wouldn't lie and be like played to 2,000 people last night it was awesome but when the video comes out when I did play to 2,000 people and it was awesome that's when people go Jesus Christ, that boy is on fire. It's Do you like, know what I'm saying? It's like footy games, isn't it, when the stadium don't see the cameramen out looking at the Yeah, seats. yeah, like you just, you, you use what you've got. Like you use, you create, being creative is about using what's in front of you. And I've always been, even though I don't, I don't see myself as being good at it, I guess I always have made the best out of that. Like I've gone to some clubs or I've, I've you know, been in events when I thought I'm going to have it tough tonight but then I've come out shining. But then I've played for thousands of people and been like, I want in control of that. Yeah. It's crazy how it works. And I think sometimes the less you've got, the more you can do with it. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we touched on like the local, well, the UK bit of that side of that. So going mm. from a local nightclub in Old, going down to London, festivals, whatnot. The sort of next stage in your DJing career was sort of taking that overseas. And I yeah. hope you've done Dubai, Ibiza. You did that, was it Rise Festivals? Yeah, Dubai, Ibiza, Ayanapa, um, Barcelona, or even America. Um, Rise Festival in the Alps, um, Tomorrowland, um, Zanti. Most of the party islands, to be fair, I've been really, really lucky. So really lucky. Gone basically there from your mum's bedroom to Ulls. I've gone from West Ull to... <laughs> Dubai. Dubai. That's what. That's my. That's, that's my. That's my title. That's what it's gonna be called. West Hull um, to Dubai. Yeah, I like that. I'll deal with that. <laughs> West Hull to Dubai. So obviously you've, you've made that transition, and um, a lot of that's come from you building your brand up. Obviously, as you upscale to bigger audiences, different crowds. How did you sort of have to alter your brand and 
what you were putting out to replicate mm. that for different types of promoters? That's a that's a really good question. Um, I think there is a certain criteria what a lot of people fall into, especially with like being an, being a creative where, you know, you're looking at bigger brands and you're trying to fit into their, you're trying to gel into their um, pro- protocol. You know, you're trying to look the part for them. You know, you're bringing it through. But I think I'll be honest and say what's made me get where I'm getting is by being me yeah. and where I literally wear my heart on my sleeve be it good or bad um, you know if something good happens I shout about it if something bad happens I don't necessarily tell everyone about it but I also take it in my stride if I've, if I've had a bad night or I've run an event and it's been a, a flop I'll take that as part of the journey and I think that's what I get my respect for um, and I always think as well like there's 24 hours in a day and I can honestly honestly say as you know, 95% of my day is work. Literally got out of the car to come do this podcast. I was on the phone about music. I'll get out of here. I'll be straight to my studio till eight, nine o'clock. Um, I'll go home and then I'll spend a good hour catching up with emails, Instagram messages, everything else. Um, and then it'll be bed, running morning, back to it. And I think for me, it's just, I get booked because people can see my energy, I think. And I think just, it's, don't get me wrong, there's, talent will take you far, but hard work, you know, good manners and good energy, I think open more doors than anything. And I think most of my opportunities and most of my, I guess in a sense, what some people could look at what I've done and be like, how oh, has he got that? How has he done that? Who's he, who's he sucking up to? Who's he doing that? And I can honestly say, if I told you the stories about how some of my, most, how 95% of my opportunities have come, you'd be like, that is crazy. Like that is like crazy. Like none of it has been, I've never messaged anyone and offered my services, which that might sound like a brag, but that's just a testament to how much effort I put into yeah. branding, social media and stuff. But in the same sense, I say I put a lot of effort into it, but I don't overthink it. That's the difference. Yeah. I put time into it. I put a certain fraction of my time into it, um, money into it. You know, if it's booking a photographer, videographer, whatever, but I don't, overthink it and I'm not over analytic of everything that I do I think that especially what I do obviously we're creating content at the minute um, we're doing I'm putting social graphics out I'm doing stuff that's going out to the masses um, yeah I think a trap I used to fall in was overthinking stuff so 100%. I'd be spending two hours on two three hours just having a design ready and changing it yeah, 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 yeah. And I think a lot of creativity although you will get the odd the odd idea that's more of an invention than being creative. I think understanding what your audience needs and giving them 75% of that is enough to build that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think as well, like you say, like you spend two hours creating something and change it. That's where you stop because that first two hours was the creative. Don't get me wrong, sometimes you might turn around, like I've made, I've spent 12 hours in the studio, made a track, left it, gone back the next day and thought, what is that? But in the same respect, I spent two hours, finished something, sent it, signed it, bang. And it's become a hit. And it's just like, there's no formula. And I'm actually learning that because I'm quite like you. I overthink, I over... I listen to one of my tracks and I'll be like, that vocal or that bass line or them pianos are just a little bit loud. But like to everyone else, they're like, they'll turn around and go, I absolutely love them pianos. They're so bright and so punchy. And I'm like, oh, maybe I did the right thing then. <laughs> I think touching on that, that's sort of understanding your audience, what they want. Um, I know you said there's no magic formula to it. Yeah. When you're creating tracks or creating content, how have you sort of built up an understanding of what your audience or different producers, different um, agencies or whatever want to see? Is that just tried and tested or have you sort of, do you make notes of anything or mm. do you mentally make notes yeah. of what works and what doesn't? So I guess I kind of mentally make notes and I, one thing I've started doing is so like going back to kind of social media and like how my day pans out. I don't, I try not to go on my phone throughout the day, but then maybe the hour where I'm, I, I know it sounds really stupid, but like I like to get in the bath and I used to like read books, but I find for my industry and my niche, even if I just spend an hour on Instagram and I actually only, and I, you know, I, I may be upset a few people here, but I unfollowed everybody on my Instagram, right? And mm-hmm. set, yeah, even you, even, and a lot of my friends was like, oh, well, does that mean you're not my friend anymore? Like what's going on? Like got really angry and I was like, you don't understand it. Like if you know me, you don't understand it. Yeah. The reason I did that is because I now only follow people that inspire me and people that um, don't just like as much as I love my friends, I love my social life. I had to cut that away from my social media because the problem is, if not, you're spending your full day going, "Oh well, Jack's on holiday, and you know, oh, Michael's gone to Ibiza. Oh, he's bought a new shoe, he's bought a new house." You're comparing. Yeah. Whereas when I look at DJs bigger than me or brands, I see ideas, and that's what's going to make me where I get. And like I said to all these people that have you know mentioned me and following them, I said, 
when I get there, of course I'm going to like ask you if you want to come. You know, you've come with me. I'd te- I'd te- I'd, if I win, my everybody around me wins. But for me to win and get where I want to get, I have to uh, sacrifice. And my sacrifice has probably been my social life in a, in a sense. But because of that sacrifice, my social life has gone from, yeah, I don't go out on a weekend around my local town, but maybe once or twice a month I get to go abroad yeah. to DJ and get paid and be build my brand. And it's just like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, I get it. And, and, and it's, it's it kind of frustrating that some people around me maybe don't get that or yeah. support that. But the ones that do are the ones that I've stuck close to. And I think the, uh, the whole idea of, you know, inspiration and fitting into brands' criteria and making mental notes, I guess it's a case of, I'll just see maybe one thing a day. Like I've seen an event in London at the minute, which is basically a socially distanced um, party. Yeah. The concept's amazing. It's very entertainment and very entertaining, very fun, very engaging without being breaking the rules. I'm going down there in two weeks. I'm going to suss it out. And who's to say I'm not going to bring it to Hull? Yeah. Which I might not now because someone might watch this video and do it before me. But what they don't know is they don't know what the event is. So they're never going to find that. But no, this is what I'm, I'm quite a... I'm, I guess I stay on the ball with trends. I'm, I'm very on the on point with trends. Not like f- in terms of my fashion because I don't. I'm not the most fashionable kid in the world. In the black tea, yeah, I'm a I'm a black tea. I'm part of the black tea gang. If if you're a DJ or a creative, you wear a black tea. Yeah. It's a simple fact because, and I, I like I'm kind of going quite minimal like in that sense, yeah. and I'm just cutting out, cutting out any form of distraction, any yeah. form of uh, non creative energy. Suck a bag. Kind of yeah, but I'm doing it in a. In a, in a sense of, I know that it's not long term, but it's for my long term. Yeah, I've done, I sort of did a similar thing. Obviously, we brought in Chino here. My job role's changing a bit over the next month. So I'm moving completely off websites and going towards sort of our brand, our culture, and getting an overhaul, yeah. giving that a massive overhaul, yeah. and changing that about. And I, similar to you, I know we've spoke about it over food, scram, or whatever, or a drink somewhere, but um, I did a similar thing to you where I unfollowed a lot of people on Instagram, started following leaders in industries. In, yeah. Um, big brand owners um, and just reaching out and connecting to people that inspire me rather than it's not putting you down is it but like you say you see things on Instagram you see people accelerating better than you moving west yeah. you? Um, and I did a similar thing so taking from that what are these do you look for inspiration only from people who have made it or do you see other people growing in your industry too that's a, such a good question um, the whole social media thing is I guess in this lifestyle room with the whole influencer culture, I feel like a lot of people have now become this whole, it's just become a highlight reel. And there's not a lot of truth behind it because I know people that have posted a photo and I know the true story behind it. And I don't want to be that person. Like if, if I'm not feeling something, I don't post it. And I think that resonates in what I do post because people can tell it's a genuine like thing. Yeah. Like if I, if, if I've had an argument with my missus, I'm not going to post a photo saying, love you, boo, can't wait to go on holiday. But when I do post photos of my missus, it's from the core, do you know what I mean? And people, and that's why people love it, I guess, in a sense. But I think in terms of like inspiration, I actually get most of my, most of my inspiration from up and coming artists and stuff because as well, I like to be able to relate to things. Like there's no point me looking at the biggest DJ in the world, going to Calvin Harrison going, that's where I want to be because as, as much as I've got aspirations, I'm quite a realistic person. Like don't get me wrong, that might one day be me, but... I don't really aim to be that. I've, I've I've only ever, like, I've had one wish in life and that's to be happy. My goals in my career are not really globally. They're just kind of, I, they're quite minimal, but I've always kind of said, if you aim for the stars and land on the clouds, clouds, clouds then you're doing all right. Yeah. Like, I'm quite a realistic person like that. I don't want a multi-million pound mansion. I don't want a Range Rover. I want my own studio in my house, which could be in Westall or yeah. London or Leeds. It could be anywhere. I want my own studio in my garden. I want a nice family. I want to be happy. And I want financial freedom. I don't want to be rich. I just want freedom. I want to know that if someone goes, you want to do this, do you want to do that? Do you want to buy that equipment? Do you need that? Do you want that? I can do it. And it's not it's not materialistic stuff. It's more things that are better in my life. And I guess that's I've had a massive transformation in the last few years because two years ago, I'd have rather have had a £300 t-shirt than this plain black one with just one brand logo there. But then I discovered online websites where you can get Copy, uh, what's the word? Snide. Snide. <laughs> I've discovered online websites where you can get the same t shirt printed for a tenner and game changed. <laughs> but it give me more. Um, no, I got, in all seriousness, I, I, my, my goalpost changed from yeah. wanting that to validate myself to other people. Mm. Two years ago, I wanted a t shirt or a watch to validate myself to other people, whereas now I just want to validate myself to the people that matter. Yeah. And, the, and, and in a sense, I've, I've noticed more people. 
Um, potentially, you know, I've heard more things, negative things getting said and jealous things getting said, but I think that's because I've come away from giving you what you want to do what I want, which is taking me further. But I'm seeing signs of that not been that not that doesn't work for you guys anymore. But it works for me, and it's better in my life and giving me validation inside rather than validation to you guys, which is what I might have been chasing a yeah. couple of years ago. Do you know what I mean? That sort of fits nicely into what you spoke at the start about sticking true to yourself. Obviously, yeah. it's your brand and that. It's obviously resonated. We'll touch on what you're doing for mental health a bit later, but um, it comes across in everything you're doing now. And I think that natural part of your brand, it's massive, especially yeah. from even from like obviously this is a marketing thing. So it's from making money, people can relate to your stories or what you're doing. It works a hundred times better than yeah. this fake facade that social media sort of created. Yeah, and I think for me as well, because I'm just you know your average Joe that's done okay with music, and I'm still young. Like I've not been doing it a long time. There's so many people wanting that, but they can they can reach it with me. Like I, I'm helping a lot of people out now because I know how it was to get my foot in the door, and I know I can literally pull someone up a few levels. And it's not in an egotistic way; it's just in a I like I people. Some people don't understand it, but I get more satisfaction of helping others than I do myself. And for example, like if I was to do really good with something, like a, say like I got a, a big track in the charts, or I'd rather have three or four people involved, not just because I like to help, I like to know that them three got what, like I've, I know I've, I've, I I've could, I don't want to uh, gloat, but I could tell you things that I've done for people this year that I know has changed their life, yeah. but that's changed my life equally as much mm -hmm. uh, and not up here in here yeah. because for me, that's like, that's um, given me purpose and given me a reason. And I think having that approachability is what sells me the best. And I also think that it's what people buy into. Same with brand, any brands, like for example, marketing, I'd come to, guys like yourselves, you know, I've just had a good chat with people in your office, I've met them for the first time, and rather than try and sell me the service, I asked them for a bit of advice and they told me exactly what I needed. They could have gone, well, oh yeah, we'll sit down and try and get you on a, on a plan. Yeah. But they've given me the value there, but the, but the thing is when I need that help, I'm going to come back because I know that they're good guys now. And it's just things like that, like I'm the same, like I give, you give out so much help, obviously there's a product at the end of it, but you're not looking to sell that product, the product sells itself because of you, because of your you being a good person, I think, so... That's a good example yeah. in your office. I've just got so much advice and help of your like marketing, your social media guys, that when I do need help or when someone asks me, who do I use or who can I use? There you go, yeah. And it's not just saying that because of because yeah. of the video. Yeah, I'm just what, it's it's, gen, it's gen, that gen, that I think it's authenticity for me. Mm -hmm. Like I I work with genuine people whose heart are in it for the right reason, and I've worked with people that aren't, and you can see through it after a while, and it shows after a while because after two months, three months, they start becoming flaky and they start becoming. You know, you can see people's you can see people's intentions after a while, and I just think for me, it's all been always been about being clean, mm -hmm. clean hearted. You mentioned there just about value, obviously, with the way the world's changing now, with all content going online, videos, um, brands especially, we're trying to adapt to it. Obviously, we we do, we run our vlog, and that's not it's more it's not to drive the sales because it it might eventually drive us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The main purpose of that is to sh one showcase value. Um, we get we, Gino goes around and speaks to Scott and what he's just spoke to you about. Yeah, talk yeah, yeah. about in the blog, he'll give advice what we're working on. And that's the same with every staff member, really. Yeah. So we give an insights into a, what we're doing for clients, people's lives, and it sort of gives value and purpose in the fact that it can be related to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. people will see it and relate to a project or a person or a problem. And it creates that relationship without even having to physically speak to someone. Hundred percent, and I think as well, like going back to what you guys are doing with the with the video stuff, it's like you're building that personal element to your. Even though this is a, a named brand, what you're doing with the marketing, I like to know. Like for example, if I book a meeting with you guys, mm -hmm. I like to know who I'm meeting. I don't like to meet a brand if that makes sense. Like for example, like a lot of the brands I work with in the music industry, like especially record labels, I could not put a face uh, a face to the names. Yeah. But I like that for my own like mentality. I like to know who I'm dealing with. I'm, I'm a very personal person. I like to build relationships and connections and knowing that I can see all you guys before I work with you, it will convert into sales. But that the good thing is you wasn't doing that with the intentions of finding the sales. And I think that's what's happened with me is I didn't get into this with the intention of building a career. I built it through love and enjoyment. It's become my career. And don't get me wrong, there's been times where I've done things more for financial gain than uh, personal gain yeah. and I've learned that the hard way that follow your heart and stick to mm. stick to your true or like you shoot your guns and I've I'm getting more success now because 
I'm being me. Yeah. Everything that you see is me. Um, everything I put out is me. My music's me. You know, my social media, I've never had anyone in control. I don't have a manager. I don't have an agent. I've tried. Um, but I think as well, because it's not even a control thing with me. It's more of a how I go about being so personal. And then I've seen emails been sent from someone representing me with no... Uh, what's the word no kind of mannerism or no kind of personal it's just very straight out the box kind of templated I'm like no that's not me I'm going to message him and I'm going to put two kisses on the end to a guy to, I'm going to put two kisses to the guy that owns the record label not because I'm a weirdo but because that's how I am I'm, I, I walk around with my arms wide open for a hug because that's just who I am and that's what I live like and don't get me wrong some people think Thingy, but I'm telling you now, 95% of people, probably 99% of people, love that. They love that more. I think that's that genuine, that genuine feeling, that authenticity, and that personal touch always wins. Just makes you approachable. 100%. Um, <laughs> so obviously the world came to a bit of a standstill uh, three months ago. We've we can sick of hearing about it, like, but um, obviously Corona hit. That sort of took away a big chunk of your income obviously yeah. clubs closing pubs closing yeah. you couldn't have barbecues you couldn't do you, you couldn't do you couldn't physically do much yeah so obviously that was a bit of a shock to the system I know we met we we were speaking a couple of days before it, or a couple of weeks before it and mm. everything was starting to fall into place for you and obviously that's a massive roadblock for you mm. um, how did you get over that really how did you overcome a complete standstill to mm. continue doing what you like doing yeah it's a great, great great question I think with something like COVID, you know, it was, nobody was ready for that. Whether whether people saw it coming or not, no one was ready for it. And we're still, there's going to be a huge ongoing thing. Think, sadly, things are shutting down every day. But in the same sense, businesses are adapting to it every day. And I think the difference, the thing is with this COVID thing, for me, you either adapt or you get left behind. In terms of my, in kind of, it's not the same for everyone. Because obviously, for example, uh, somebody that owns a nightclub might not be able to adapt they might physically have to shut. A lot of people will, and I understand that, but I'm saying, as a creative, you either adapt to the digital era that we're in and you turn your business into a success online or do nothing. And I think for me, it was a case of, I was already wanting to do, I always think everything happens for a reason. And I was already wanting to do this whole online world thing, which I've started doing now. But I didn't dedicate any time to it because I was so busy doing um, gigs and traveling and meetings and all this stuff. And I think one thing that's COVID made me do was slow down and give me it, it give me the time, and that's where everything happens for a reason has come round in a good way. God forbid, God bless anybody that you know has fallen ill or lost anyone. I don't. I'm not saying it's been a blessing in in that sense, but for a lot of people, I think it was the reset button we needed. It was the slow down and visualize what you actually want to do. I've I've learned I've learned so much. I've done so much. It's been the most successful four months of my life, and I think now I'm going to move forward with that because I've just got so much fire in my belly for it. And I also think that um, it just, it's made a lot of people realise that you don't have to travel three hours for a meeting. We've, we, Zoom has been there for years, mm -hmm. but I guarantee you the, the stocks and the value of Zoom have gone through the roof in the last four months because I'd never heard of it. Now, I guarantee you I'd have conversations about Zoom five times yeah. a day. You, you know, we could have done this on Zoom. Yeah. Granted, I live, near, I live nearby, so we've done it, but like, you can do so much. Like, for example, I'm doing some production things online. I'm helping, I'm, cho I'm teaching people online now. I'm selling products online. I never did that before. I'm doing all sorts of things. And obviously I'm doing YouTube online, which is something I've always wanted to dedicate time to, but it's not. The 10, vi 10 minute video that somebody sees on YouTube takes X amount of editing, X amount of planning, X amount of executing, yeah. and X amount of bad takes before you get it right. And it's just crazy, man. Uh, we did the vlog, didn't we? We've done a vlog. We've done 20 episodes through lockdowns, two weeks through mm. lockdown, with every single person videoing themselves in the room, and I must have done about 100 yeah. every single day, just trying to get the right video. Um, so obviously you touched on your YouTube there, which is something you've wanted to do, I know we spoke about it before, um, you just kicked that off first couple of weeks in lockdown, was it? Literally, yeah, like I had a YouTube account, um, and it was always in my head, oh, I'll, I'll put my content on, I think everyone's got a YouTube account, most people have, and I had the YouTube account, and obviously, I think I had like 200 followers just because people probably searched my stuff. And my, But all my music was going out on labels, channels, and it's it was never really my intention to start my YouTube to promote my music. It was to promote a deeper thing, like more educational content. Um, so I had the YouTube anyway. The platform was there, um, but I had nothing on it. It was just a blank canvas to start with. So obviously, you've set up a YouTube channel now, almost at 8,000 subscribers, probably going to be miles more by the time this goes out. <laughs> I hope so. Um, 
when you first, so the first couple of weeks, I saw, I noticed she's putting out more mixing stuff, so more uh, hour long sets of you mixing your favourite tunes, dancing like an idiot, shit mm -hmm. that's about, which then you've started now releasing more um, more niche videos to target towards DJs. Yeah. What was, was there sort of a plan when you did that? Did you plan re releasing videos that would appeal to mm -hmm. the masses to then filter down, or is it just naturally what you wanted to do? I, <laughs> I don't plan. I don't plan anything. Like I've got no structure. I write lists on my phone, yeah. right? So I've got a list on my phone saying content to curate. Um, and then there'll be three of them, which are like mixes. So like, obviously I do like weekly mixes, like locked, I've been doing lockdown mixes. Obviously now I'm going to start going out and about, I'm going to buy a generator and everything and stand on rooftops and do these cool mixes. I've got so many ideas. So what I'll do is I'll write mix. Um, and then I'll put like a few tracks idea that I've got to like, and that as an, a bit of a start, like a genre. Um, and then under that, it'll be like, there'll be like product like music production videos and then I'm going to start teaching people DJ via YouTube but there's no like real right I'm going to do this now I'm going to do this now I maybe like wake up and go right I'm going to do two videos this week like for example after this I'm going to go and curate a video the next one won't be till maybe Monday um, I don't really have much of a plan but I've kind of got an outlet I always have outlet outlines and, and visions but I don't I don't plan because life changes by the minute I could walk out of here and someone might ring me and go I'm in hole what are you doing do you want to go for dinner um, and I'm gonna say yeah so that plans out the window till tonight and it's like it's just I, i'm quite um unorthodox with my planning but i do i guess my vision is just to help inspire and also entertain because the the, the mixes get the most in, in impressions because the audience is so wide everybody wants to listen to mixes not everybody but like the majority of people want like who don't make music or don't dj have no interest in still want to watch me dj but then it filters down into people that might might think, oh, I'm like like me five years ago. Oh, I might learn DJ. Oh, he teaches people how to DJ. So then you grow a, a niche audience. But then obviously for the community of DJs that I've already got following me, they want to learn how I did what I did. So I'm also giving that away. But at the same time, the reason I do it is mainly because I like to help. I like to inspire. But I also by doing this for other people, it pushes me to learn more and develop. Do you know what, I'm, do you know what I mean? Like if I do, if I help you, I have to go and learn something new to keep on top of it so it's like if i'm bringing you up from there to there i've got to keep going yeah. so it's like as you go like it's like a very it's a very um powerful movement very powerful movement and it's something that i wouldn't have done without lockdown so yeah. i think it's given a lot of time for people to sort of do that yeah that thing um, now going from obviously you've got your following across social medias and you've pushed your mixes on facebook on your facebook page but you've not really driven much more than a Facebook post. Have you put any sponsors? No, 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 never. So, so this is all natural. Um, we've, we're obviously putting our vlogs on YouTube and we're not doing it at the minute. We're just getting up there. We're not doing any sort of research into what our keywords should be, what um, descriptions yeah. we have. Did you do any research into that or is it just sort of... Um, in terms of like marketing and stuff i guess i kind of there's maybe i could name maybe 10 people i look to for inspiration um channels pages even other djs like there's a few people in my industry that are really are really like smashing it um but i've always had my own agenda um in terms of like keywords and stuff there is tools out there which you can see what keywords other people are using it's, you know, it's like hashtags on instagram you can find the right ones for you but i i don't think that it i don't feel like just because you put keywords in is going to change the world. I think the value of the content from the first few moments of that video is what just depends on the video, on the on the um, interaction and the, the the views. Because I've had videos where I know in my head I kind of rushed them and they haven't led led an impact. But I've had videos that I spent maybe eight hours editing with all the little notations and um, typography that comes in and fly like uh, call to actions and stuff, and they've really grown me. Um, and gone like not viral but like they've, they've blown up quite well um, and obviously the mixes do really well so it's like I guess it's just a, a combination of good content um, good value and a little bit of marketing I am looking into obviously doing advertisements and sponsored posts and stuff but I don't like to throw my money away which is why my man in there has helped me um, I've got some good advice from you guys today which I'll probably take away and get straight on with today um, but I've, I'm quite an organic person yeah. like sometimes I can put a post out and it get 10 likes other times I can put a post out and get a thousand likes within an hour mm. and there's no real I don't I don't cry either way or jump for joy it's just social media's algorithms crazy like it's just a bad metric yeah um, but that, that's why I wanted to get you in today I have to be honest I, um, a lot of people I mean you put the hours in obviously and you've put hours in over the freaking 
seven years that you've been doing it or out longer probably. Mm. Um, but you sort of built this brand around, like you said, being natural. But a lot of it has been organic and just yeah. you've had videos go viral on Facebook. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. The day with that police thing. Is, is there an, any sort of recipe for, do you think, to make things go viral? I know you said you don't plan, but mm. have you, obviously that moment you knew it was happening, there's a garden full of people yeah. and there's coppers walking. At that moment, did you already know that this video is going to go mad before you even put it on? Um, no, but when I watched it back, I was like, this is going to pop off. Yeah. I think I, I, I do get, you do get a, an inkling. But I always think it's the stuff that you think is going to do well that doesn't do well. Yeah. And it's the things that you think are going to flop that do really well. Like for, even like with music, like tracks that have done millions of streams have never been my favourites. Tracks that I can't, can't even reach a thousand streams have been, I've been like, why does no one like this? Um, and I think with videos, it's like, don't expect, like I set my expectations low and then anything above that's a bonus. I think that's the way to do it. Like Like going back to the whole likes and engagement and stuff like I put a video out last week and it naturally did naturally it's done about 20,000 views not really gone viral but just like the engagement I've had and the, the messages and the, the love has been incredible but then I put something out the day after it's just, I think it's got like a thousand uh, views mm. and the engagement's maybe like six or seven comments and I do look because I like to see where I'm what's going on but there's no rules there's no uh, formula there's no algorithm I think consistency is a good one yeah. but I also don't think do it by the book I don't think be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday I do I agree for businesses like don't, don't get me wrong I know a lot of people watching this are going to be business owners probably on packages for social media campaigns where they get it structured and I get that and I get why they do it Just by the <laughs> yeah no I get why they do that by the time by the book but I also think for someone like a creative yeah. it's got to be very organic and natural it's, it's, and I think that's what I'm tr like I don't, I don't want that to get twisted I do think it, I get why businesses have a structure I get why they sponsor posts I get why they post at a certain time for their criteria I get why they do certain things and I completely understand that but I think for someone who's a creative, be it a DJ, music producer, an artist, a photographer, an influencer, whatever you may be, I think doing it off the cuff does has been my success. I think you've got to sort of we touched on it earlier, but we, I think you've got to understand they understand your audience and then test your waters. We've we've just started doing the vlog. We've done tried we've tried so many different formulas. Gina has planned things. We've done it off the cuff, and like you said, you can check and see what your audience are doing or who relates with it. But until you actually understand it as a whole. Yeah. It, you can follow the formulas you find online. Mm. You can follow the people telling you what to do, the Gary Vs of the world. But unless it works for your audience and who you want to actually relate to, you aren't going to fucking see me do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 so true. And I think that's going back to the whole, like, um, you know, your motivational speakers, people like Gary Vee who do, like, really, really good, like, content, yeah. like uh, Joe Rogan and people like that. Like, it's awesome. But I also think... It's not personal. Be personal. It's not personal to you. Mm -hmm. I like to get motivated and listen to people around me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I I vibe off people like like yourself and being sat here. Like this is a vibe to me. Whereas if I sit in the car and listen to a bit of like uh, Gary V, don't get me wrong. There's some unbelievable yeah. content, and I'm not underestimating what he's what he does. I think he's brilliant, and I've took some great things. But I kind of have to adapt that to my way of life because a lot of it's. I wouldn't say it's Americanized, but it's kind of that whole, you look, he's very broad with his thing. It's not very niche unless he's directing it at one person. And sometimes you think, actually, that's me. So I like to like listen and engage with like more local podcasts and engage with people around here that have like been successful, like business owners and get their knowledge because I know that that's relatable to my mm -hmm. niche. We spoke about at the start, you've got sort of other things going on. Um, you also do videography, photography, mm -hmm. and you've recently set up 147 Social, which is a content creation and advertising platform. Yeah. Is it mainly for Facebook, Instagram? Yeah, it's very um, very modern day agency. So it's kind of like the, the whole concept of it was that, you know, people like myself, like young creatives that need that push from other young creatives rather than being like a more of a corporate brand that we don't really work with probably you know similar clients yourself we don't work with big businesses we work with up and coming people um that i can actually relate to and that people that i can also help because i know kind of their struggles and even on a personal level like someone might come to me and be like oh like i've got this idea but like money's like this because i know how that feels I've been in a position where I've had this idea and I knew it could work and I still have it now, but I ain't got the capital. Uh, we're not from a background, I'm not from a background where there's wealth. Um, you know, I could ring my dad and beg him, but I don't think he's gonna, he's, he's always looked after me, but I don't think if I asked for X amount of money, I'd get it unless it was a solid idea. Um, so I'm trying to help people like that 
turn their ideas into you know businesses and i think it's refreshing to do that and it's nice and obviously i look after the photography and the videography because that's my other passion except from djing um, and then my friend alex looks after the social ads who's obviously marketing yeah. and he's he's run um he's run so, uh, some globally he's yeah. run adverts for like global businesses and stuff he's done really well with it so he kind of has more of a corporate thing but he wanted to peel away from that yeah. like he's been in the corporate world knows the people knows the score but he doesn't want to be in that world so we kind of like we're very niche and it's it's a slow grower because we're only taking on certain clients we're trying to work with individuals rather than you know a big corporate four story ten story building kind of go vibes you know what i'm saying do you find i've seen some of the stuff you put on we'll put a clip over it over here and um, you did uh, midnight munches didn't you yeah are you finding obviously you spoke earlier about having that natural brand for yourself are you finding it refreshing working with the up and coming and the natural? Does it sort of transfer into the content you create for the smaller brands? Yeah, I think um, I just find it more as well as working with like young people that kind of get my angle. Um, I've done work for corporate clients and obviously my style, I'm, I, have got a, I have got a certain style, like everyone's got a certain style and I'm not really a corporate person in general. And I probably don't have the vision for corporate people if I'm being completely honest, but I think for young creatives, looking to work like f fashion brands um uh, a lot of people are opening like you say like um like candy shops and milkshake parlors and bag of places like young people um i can kill it with them but then if you put me in like a high-end michelin restaurant and said do a photo shoot don't get me wrong I'd, I'd do it and i'd be great at it but that's not actually what gets me driving so i do i do i think me working with realizing that i need to be working with similar minded people has been a game changer for me how have you found this is probably obviously aimed at more smaller businesses starting up. How have you found value in your time? How have you justified saying to a client, how oh, 500 quid a grand, two grand for this video? Yeah. How have you, how do you back yourself up? Yeah, it's a good question. I think most of my value comes from my own success. Yeah. Um, a lot of people buy into what I do because they've seen my pe how big I've built my personal brands. Mm -hmm. um, obviously one thing we haven't really spoken about is the fact that I built a videography brand yeah. in the last two years um, started literally just I had a camera because of my DJing uh, kind of similar to DJing inquisitive wanted to learn bought a, bought a GoPro you do a few GoPro videos on holiday with your girlfriend or whatever um, that gets a bit of reaction then you think right I'm going to get a better camera and show them what I'm really about then you get a little Canon off eBay for 300 quid you know you don't it's very unstable it's good but it's unstable and then you're like oh well I need a I need a gimbal now oh that lens is a bit tight oh I'm going to have to get a wide angle lens next thing you know you're £3,000 deep you still haven't got all the gear you need but a couple of people want videos doing for 100 quid so you get 100 quid there 100 quid there 100 quid there bang new lens then you get another 100 quid 200 quid 300 quid 400 quid bang got the new bag I've got like my equipment my lighting I've got everything I've got my cameras my mics right, I'm good to go now, but I still haven't got much experience. So then you're still kind of doing jobs for maybe under 200 quid here and there. You, you do your first weddings. I've always said to people, like, don't when people play the exposure card, like when you're working for them in the garden, and get you loads of exposure, look at that. And if you know that there's 100% value in it for you, do it. But if you know that the if you don't get a good vibe off it, don't do it. Like some people have said to me, oh, yeah, I'm friends with someone, so I can get you in with this brand. And I've done it and then poof, never had anything. And you let you learn that way. But in another sense... I started filming weddings two years ago. Never shot a wedding in my life. Through DJing, one of my DJing friends is getting married. Good looking young couple, very popular in the in the city. Um, you know, good just nice people. He goes, Look, I want a wedding video. I know you're doing your videography. And the good thing was he approached me at a stance of, I know you're good at what you do, you haven't filmed a wedding before, but do you fancy it? So I turned around and go, yeah, because I know there's no pressure because he knows I haven't filmed a wedding before. I just said, look, give me a couple of hundred quid, I'll get what I can get. Next thing you know, that video is almost going viral again. Like, literally, like, I think that like, got 50,000 views organically on Facebook. Next thing you know, can you do my wedding? Can you do this? I'm getting all these inquiries. I'm going, I haven't got a website or a logo. Boom, logo, done. Website, done. Booking system, done. Invoice template, done. Booked a full year of weddings in 2017. 
upgraded my equipment to the latest gear, which is what we're filming on now as well, the same as your cameras. You know, I've got all this brand spanking stuff and my video is going to another level. Then the price has gone for like two, three hundred quid to a thousand just for the basic package, one thousand five hundred, two grand. Next thing you know, we're in 2019. I'm going abroad to film weddings. I'm going up and down the country to film weddings. I'm stacked out with weddings. But because of that, that also takes pressure off my DJ and work because I don't have to work four times a week driving up and down the motorway at four in the morning. I can just do the gigs that I want. So everything just comes together. Um, I'm doing wedding videos, which also links me with a load of creators and photographers. They also need help with my marketing. You know, I film a wedding and sometimes I say, fancy doing an hour set, doubles the wage, boom, done. Before you know it, you're like Del Boy. And it's like, it's all fallen together for me in such an organic way that if you was to sit, obviously I'm explaining how it's worked, but if you was to ask me how it happens and, you know, there's no real, no there's no secret sauce. There's no secret sauce. And even I sometimes look back and go, how have I managed to get myself here? Like, you are off your head. How have you done this? You're a videographer, a photographer. You're on your own marketing agency. And got, I've got a beautiful office, which I also do my DJing in, my live streams. I've got a music studio in there. I do podcasts in there. I have client meetings in there. You know, my mate Alex, who I'm in business with, he also runs other businesses from there. And it's like, we're just off our heads, just yeah. generating like, and I think that's just that just sums me up. That's what people are buying into, like the whole the fact that I'm and, and 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 it's like it's nice that people you know value that, and it's also nice that people look and go, it's done well in. So we touched on DJing, producing, videography, photography. You've started this fucking social media brand. Yeah. You're doing everything. I have an OnlyFans account as well. Yeah, well, we could do dual content on that. <laughs> um, the other side of your life. Um, I'll let you explain it because it's probably you'll give a better backstory. Um, is mental health? Yeah. Um, we, you, and me went through something mad. Just explain how you've transitioned from what happened to what you're doing now. Because I think what you've said about being natural and yeah. having your own personality, this is where it really reflects from your perspective. Because yeah. you're even when you was mad busy with your DJing before that happened, you dedicated so much time to this and we spoke about loads on text on the phone and the fucking voice notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to explain the story, mate, I think it's a, a powerful one. Yeah, definitely. Um so I don't know where to start, but I guess so as Jack's just mentioned, we both lost one of our best friends to suicide in two thousand seventeen at the end of it. Uh, sorry, two thousand eighteen, at the end of two thousand eighteen. And it was a situation that obviously you grieve like crazy. Like I went through stuff that I never expected inside me. But I also think that it was, like I say, everything happens for a reason. You know, I'd change it if I could. But that has put me in a mind space and a place now what I'm, I'm almost like I look up and thank him for because I was so naive. I did not know what anxiety was. I did not know what depression was. I did not know what... You know, I didn't understand. Like I was, not once I was cold hearted. I was just happy. Yeah. I was just like, nothing fazed me. Like I lived in my own bubble. You know, music's always been going really well. And even when it hasn't, I've just I'm very positive. Um, very very positive. And obviously, when that happened, I just went from being the happiest kid in the room to the to the to the most broken boy you've ever seen. But on the front, I was still the happiest person in the room. And that was zapping my energy that much. Like 2019 was the toughest year of my life because I had to keep smiling. I had to keep DJing and making people happy. But I was hurting inside. Um, I was filming people's weddings. I had no attachment to it. You know, I still smashed it. You know, I'm not saying anyone watching that filmed the wedding. I loved it, but it wasn't personal. I kind of lost my, my purpose. I felt like I lost my... Um, I lost my authenticity a bit, but from going from that, that's what's brought me where I am today. And I think from that journey, I, I, I'd, I'd been in like, um, I'd been in um, positions before where I've, you know, like say like relationships in the, in the past, like where we've been with people that have suffered from like mental health problems. And I just didn't understand it like at all. Like, you know, friendships, girlfriends when I was younger, like I didn't get it. And I was used to think like, no, I, would, I, would, I wasn't arrogant about it, but I was kind of, I just dismissed it. I was very dismissive. I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know what the anxiety is. Like when they go like, oh, I don't want to go there. I don't know. And I'm like, 
what's wrong with you? Because I just I've always, I used to be quite confident, yeah. and then obviously this happened. I just went from hero to zero in, in inside of me. Like once I was cock, I was never cocky, but I was always pretty sure. Like I could, I was confident in what I could do and where I was going, and didn't have like any worries about like anything. And all of a sudden, I just became this like ball of anxiety. Um, and it's been a massive journey for me in like like dealing with that. And it's still to this day, like even just the thought of coming here, it's like, shit, like, do I need to wear a shirt? Yeah, I know yeah, I never exactly. would, because that's not me. I text you saying, what do I wear? Like, can I wear my cap? Am I right? <laughs> because that's how my mind works now. And, but what I've learned to do is I reverse that now and I go, if the worst thing that I'm worrying about is if I can wear a cap and a black t-shirt, I think my life's pretty good. Yeah. So I kind of flip it on its head and it's all, called, it's all about perspective yeah. um, and gratitude. Yeah. So what I've been on this journey about is like, you know, learning what matters and what doesn't matter. Like you say, I think before all this happened, I was very kind of image. I was very kind of, you know, I'd go to Dubai and I'd want to show everyone where I was staying. Um, whereas now if I went to Dubai, I'd record my mix and show everyone what I'm doing because that's what matters. That's what's selling me and that's what benefits me and that's what I love doing. Um, and I just learned a lot. And obviously during that journey, I'd, I'd heard about obviously Andy's Man Club, which, you know, I've got the, a little thing on here. Um, it's okay to talk and his man club and I wear that on literally on my sleeve like I've lost it for two days mate and I feel like I'm empty without it um, so I, I knew about Andy's man club but I didn't feel like I had any validation to go until obviously what happened um, and then obviously when this happened when losing my friend I actually had already I'd planned to go to Dubai like the week after um, and he was the first person I told about it and I, I'd spoke to my mum my girlfriend everyone I said look I don't want to go I don't want to go but what am I going to do sit and mope on it or go and I had the best time of my life but deep down inside of me I, I was so hurt like I'd go out drinking in Dubai I'd come home and cry you know I'd I'd be having the best I was having the best time of my life it's so weird to look back on it because I'm in such a different mind space I was having the best month of my life in Dubai but it was also the worst because I was so on my own it was such a weird feeling like I had an amazing time you know Chris my friend up there he just looked after me like a dream and I'm so grateful I didn't have a, I had a great time I like a, a, I look back and I have such good memories, but I was so broken inside and I had no coping mechanisms. I did have no knowledge of, I didn't even know what was happening. I was just lost. I was broken. I was down. I was, I was, I was sad. I was, I was confused. I was hurt. I felt like I'd been betrayed by someone. It's, it's, it's like, a, it was like I'd been cheated on. It was so weird. I couldn't even describe it. Um, and I knew about Andy's man club and I thought if I'm ever going to go and do something, now's the time. And, and the guys from there went and did a walk on the bridge where we lost our friend a week after Kind of indirectly as like a bit of a thing about that because at the same time he jumped off the bridge, somebody else yeah. did. Oh, I think they got, I, I, obviously because I was so engrossed in what happened to us, I don't know yeah. the end result. Um, so I thought that is, I need to go and do my thing now. And I just remember going there and like, it's one of them situations where, because I was in such a dark place and I'd never spoke to anyone and, you know, you don't want to worry your mum and dad, you don't want to worry. And I won't say I was in a dark place, like I never had no intentions yeah. of doing anything stupid, but I was just so lost and I just confused every day. I was just get from the start to the end. There was no motive. Yeah. I still did things. I was still busy. I still worked hard. I was still grafting. I was still quite motivated, but it was, it, there was no long-term thing. So I went down there and I was like, I don't really, I don't really, as much as I do get anxiety, I don't think of things till it comes to it. Yeah. And then I'm outside the gates and I'm like, Jesus, I'm here now. And luckily there's a lot of people there I know, which is a blessing and a curse because you, you feel comfortable, but then you also start worrying. Um, and I got in there and obviously I remember starting getting into the session and like the first time I spoke was just like, I was shaking, you know, when you get sweat, your palms are sweating and you just sat there and waiting for it to come around to yeah. me. And I'm like, what am I going to say? And I just spoke and I just remember like tear in my eye, just told it as it was. The full room applauded me. I fucking nearly want to cry now. Like, I just felt so... I just felt like everything I was feeling, everybody in that room understood. Like, you know when you tell people your problems, like, oh, yeah, no, no, I don't worry, it'll be all. But everyone actually got it. And I was just like, I just felt so not on my own. Like, not on my own. I just felt such a part of something. And literally from there, mate, it's gone from being the nervous kid in the corner of the room to help him run the group. Now I, you know, I facilitate for that group. I, I wear the stuff. I've done DJ sets for them on their page to raise awareness. I've done charity walk. I've, I've just got so involved and that's not in like an entitlement or an egotistic way because every time these things happen, it's not for personal gain. It's, it's, I do everything I do for mental health now with the thought of, and this sounds crazy because obviously it, it's, I, I'm, I'm aiming for, you know, a wide spectrum of people, like anyone I can help, a girl, a boy, a man, a woman, a, a husband, a wife, 
but I look at it from my angle because everything I do is from like not for me but it's from my own experience I think of it when I promote mental health and I get involved if I can stop one group of lads going through what we went yeah. through the trauma the breakdown like I hope people don't mind me saying but like we've probably our friendship group has broken from that from that like we have all done our own thing. I don't care what anyone says, you know, some people still see each other, some people don't, some people talk, some people don't. That is just broke us, bro. Like, regardless of what anyone else says or anyone thinks of me saying this, like, we all have grieved so differently that some of us have argued about it, some of us agreed, some of us have felt guilty, some of us have felt like, you know, I'm blaming so-and-so and someone. And like, it's just, it's just demolished people, it's demolished families and so many people have been affected by it that if I can stop one friendship group going through that, that's my motive. I just think if I can... Under the age of twenty five, suicide in May, in suicide and mental health is horrific as it is. Like the rates, it's getting better. There's so much good stuff out there, especially when you start looking. But it's such a horrific thing, and I've heard so many stories. I've I've seen other people's traumas. I'm, you know, when you hear about it going on, and, and like I've heard about I've heard similar situations to what we've been through, and I can resonate with it so deep, it just breaks my heart. Yeah. And I just think it's bad enough as it is, and then it's bad enough in men but it's even worse in under 25s. And that's my angle. That's my little, I feel like I can lead away, especially with the DJ and stuff, because obviously I'm in a position where I've got a bit of a voice, you know, a little bit of a presence, I guess, on social media, rather than use that to promote teeth whitening and, yeah. you know, rather than use my presence to promote um, brands of T-shirts, which don't get me wrong, it's great. I use it to something close to my heart. I use my presence to promote something to my heart. And don't get me wrong, some people won't will get it. And I, I bet you this kid's my age, I think. I have a day off. Yeah. That's fine. You can think that, but when you need that help, you won't be saying that. And 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 I've had and I, and again, not an entitlement thing, not a egotistical thing, but the amount of messages I get about mental health, music, and all of that relating, that's why I do it for. I don't do it for the guy who sits with his group chat saying, yeah. "Oh, why is he promoting mental health?" Who's he? Like, I do it from the heart, and I do it for my own reasons, and it makes me feel a sense of pride. Do you know what I mean? It sort of brings it full circle and the fact that you stay, you mentioned at the start when you're building your own brand which obviously has financial gain for you yeah. at the forefront but you you follow yourself in your natural bit Yeah. and this obviously has no financial gain but has a gain in the fact of enrichment for yourself yeah. and it just follows that you can see obviously what we spoke about today it flows the whole way through it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah like it kind of like it's just another chapter in my journey and I think you know the next one will flow back to this and it'll be like it's just mad when you look back because you don't see it coming I can't you can't predict all these things and like obviously what like I say it was the worst it's the worst thing I've ever been through in my life yeah. but I'm using I'm trying to turn that into a positive mm -hmm. I'd change it all tomorrow no money nothing if, if someone said look everything out of your life's gone bring it back yeah. I would 100% do that like nothing could do nothing could change but no, I know that can't change I'm realistic so I'm going to make the best out of a bad situation and try and flip it on the on a positive. And obviously, my life has has adapted to that. Like it's it's brought me so much hair, hair, but I'm actually on the other side now. Like obviously, I still have my days where, I, like the other week, a song came on, I had a bit of tear in my eye. But I'm turning instead of thinking about it negatively, I'm thinking about it positively, positively. And you know when people preach about like positive mind and that, I'm like I'm not one to preach at all. I don't preach. Oh yeah, wake up and do this. Like I do meditate. I do read books. I do try and cut my social media use down. I do diet a little bit, even though I've got beer in my hand. You know what I mean? I do do the right things in a sense, but at the same time, maybe having that beer in my hand is sometimes what you need. Yeah. Maybe having that chocolate cake that I just had before I came here is what I needed and the coffee and the, and the Red Bull. That might be what I needed at that time. Maybe having that cig might be what you needed. Like, There's no way to... You can't tell people how to live their life. That's, why, that's what preaching is. Preaching is telling someone how to do things. Mm -hmm. I do, but I'm there to help if you need it. Yeah. Same, and I think that's what's good about like mental health and like some of the organisations that I've worked with and some of the people that I know. None of them are forcing you to come, you know. There's people that come that I never thought would come and there's people that I maybe thought could do with it, but I won't tell them to come. It's up to them if they want to come. You can't get help until you're willing to get it. And I think as well, my angle, my look on it is, is if I'm a very, as you know, I'm a very busy person. I've got my fingers in a few pies. I'm, I'm working hard. I'm building my own brands, but... If I can dedicate a couple of hours in my week to go into a, a mental health group and do the odd bit and bob here, yeah, hopefully it might make someone else my age go, hang on a minute, look what he's doing. Like, maybe I could have a go at that. And it's not it's not a personal thing. It's I've seen people walk through the door and I know full well that they have seen that on my social media or they might have messaged me. I don't make a song and dance of it. I just smile inside and think I'm so glad that I've helped one person. Do you know what I mean?